Hey guys, welcome back to a podcast about nothing with V. You <laughs> are not V. I can't say AD first though. So All right, with V. And AD. Hey. We have special guests. Ooh, we hey. have guests. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce yourself. We have Manny Wells hey. and Vitavius Vandross, aka Foggy Raw. I was about to say that. I was like, who that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I ain't seen that. Man. Man. <laughs> you don't even know who you are. That's my alias. That's my smooth alias. Smooth. I like that name. Yeah. Wait, say it again. Foggtavius Vandross. Foggtavius. Man, you see my Vandross. radio voice, low key. <laughs> Foggtavius Vandross. Can you sing? You know, I is your last name bit. really Vandross? No, no, no. no, no. Oh, he all here. Perfect. <laughs> <train. laughs> Taking the fuck. All right, so, AD, explain to him what today is about. So we're here. You know, me and V always have conversations. So we're really just trying to gain understanding. Once again, this is very serious. Very it's serious. Always serious. <laughs> it's, always it's always serious. It's always serious. The conversation is always serious, but we just want to know. It's um, with African music culture everything being so accepted nowadays before we were what african booty scratchers and whatnot oh. <laughs> so are you african yes okay. i'm liberian so with people it's being a- okay but no with it being so accepted we we discuss this often with first generation but i found out recently that you guys are not first generation born you were actually born back home and moved <laughs> and moved across the pond when you guys were how old were you? I was nine when I moved. How I was old? about four or five. Tell the people where you were born. Let's talk about it. So I was born in Accra, Ghana. Hey now. Um, I was there living with my dad or my mom. She was she came here, and so I stayed with my dad, with grandpa, and um, I don't remember so so much, mm-hmm. but I remember going to school for about one year. I remember getting in trouble. I remember always. <laughs> I remember almost getting kidnapped. Oh, what? Lucky, yeah, what? nigga. So it's crazy. Can I say nigga? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I remember there was a time, and you know, Questlove, the drummer. Yeah. So I always have this bad image of Questlove because the guy looked like Questlove. I always remember. Wow. That. Yeah, and he had this big bush. I remember I went outside when I wasn't supposed to, and he tried to snatch me, and I ran. And I'm even like low key lucky I made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I remember that, but that's about it. I remember getting beat in school for eating chalk. Yeah, they oh, used to beat you. Oh, got beat for that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you should have got your ass. Yeah, I was getting beat. beat. My teacher thought I was crazy, and then, we did too. Yeah, that's about it. I got yeah. some good memories, but How not chalk taste. I'm explaining. Oh yeah. <laughs> She's about to describe it. Well, just I mean, like sugar. You must know I had because you know I got anemia, oh. so I had like when you have anemia, or I think it's iron deficiency. I thought so, it was about ice though. Yeah, no, nah, but it's like ice, chalk, and dirt. They all taste good to you. Mm, yeah. I, ain't, I ain't never mm. had that. I never tried dirt. Fun chalk, fact. I tried it, yeah. I, what, what's it? Oh, anemia. Anemia. Yeah. It's like iron deficiency. Yeah. yeah. But I got like mild anemia, not like. Definitely. You don't just walk around yeah. eating chalk. <laughs> <laughs> but half the time, that is true because half the time when people are walking around like chewing on ice, that's what yeah. it is. Mm. Oh. Yeah, so that's why I eat ice all the time. Yeah. 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 Uh, Always freezing for real. So, um, shoot, I was born in Lagos, Nigeria. Moved to the States when I was nine. Like Jesse, I always used to get in trouble. Like, I remember like skipping freaking first grade. Skip <laughs> like, it. Where were you going? To recess <laughs> and like <laughs> so you skip to yeah school. yeah i went to school I, so it, it'll be so it'll be different scenarios like one time we would go to recess and like the school was huge i think it was um uh staff school or something like that it was like there was like this whole institution where it was from kindergarten to freaking college mm-hmm. yeah okay. a lot of, i feel like a lot of schools over there are like that yeah yeah so like the school was so big, so like six of us, I don't even remember these niggas, but I just remember it was like six of us after this one recess, we just like, yo, we're not going back. And we just kept playing. We were playing soccer with like the high schoolers. <laughs> but you no, know. That, that was the first scenario. The second scenario was we just wouldn't go to the, the um, we would like sneak out. So you have like a, 
the little lines, assembly lines. Oh, and night, yeah. So we would, like sneak out and not go to like class and just go to the to re- park. To yeah, whatever. Research. How do you yeah. learn this when you're young like this? That's what I, I don't just understand. wanted to play. But when I got older, I was like, <laughs> damn, I was dumb. Like I was skipping class. So, but you know, you were extra ham. As a Nigerian boy doing that, cause <laughs> yeah, bro. You were when I got get back to extra trouble doing bro, that stuff, my bro. teacher would tell me to carry the chair. Of course, <laughs> what? of course. Yo, They'll she probably slap you in your face, and then your parents not gonna say nothing. Yeah, they're not gonna say. Oh yeah, oh, my dad didn't say. I got spanked. Yeah, like, good slapping, bro. He's dumb. So yeah, yeah. you were wild. I got beaten. I got beat that that one day because we got caught. It was like we didn't go back after our recess. We got caught, and then like that was when the teacher's like, okay, hold the chair. Like this light-skinned lady too. <laughs> just I holding. remember her. She just. She beat you while you were holding a chair. Oh yeah. That's what we need to bring over here. But you know, soft you, ass you American know, kids. You know what niggas used to do? Like the bad like high schoolers, but wear like three pants. <laughs> Dark young is that's bad, smart. bro. Yeah, so we used to look up to them like we want to be like. <laughs> we want to wear three pants. <laughs> My mom wasn't about to let me wear three pants, boy. That <laughs> but, yeah. is funny. So. What Nine was, and five. Yeah. What was your transition? Like, how did you learn that you were coming over here, and what was your transition like? Shoot. We always used to go to the freaking embassy, and we got denied a bunch of times. So, like, I just stopped caring about coming to America, really. So one oh, day. Oh, so it was always a goal of your family to get over here. Yeah, because my dad was here. Oh. Okay. My dad was here, and he was trying to bring us over. I just remember just going one last time, and then we finally got it, and everybody was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Okay." Sure. Um, and then the transition was cool. Like I was I was pretty much exposed to like American culture from T V. Like we had cable, we used to watch like Dexter and like Power Rangers mm-hmm. and my cousin always used to come to the States every summer. So he was just like, Yo, like this is what happened and then when we moved here, they they lived in Nigeria but they just kept coming, like, yo, like this is what's happened in Nigeria. So we were pretty much hip to what was going on here um with american movies we try to like mock them with the accents and <laughs> stuff like that so yeah i mean it was it was interesting was it what you expected um well okay when i when i found out i was coming to america i was happy because i was like okay we're gonna live with my mom it's chill <laughs> but um so actually no 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 i came with my dad but my dad couldn't stay so I came and just lived with my mom for a minute, mm-hmm. and then it was like, "Oh yeah, you gonna be um, you gonna be uh, going to school." So I was so scared. Cause I'm like, "Yo, it's gonna be like white kids there. <laughs> I never seen no <laughs> white kid in my life." I remember even That's the first crazy. time I saw a light skinned kid, I was like, "What is wrong with him?" Like, <laughs> we still trying crazy. to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> so I came. I remember my first day ever going to school. Um, I literally was like. I was so scared like I was like okay let me just be quiet don't say a word and I remember my grandma has these little recordings of me and how I would describe school I would describe it like it was some kind of like laboratory where they're testing on <laughs> students it's like it wasn't even that bad at all but yeah so it was it was an interesting transition you know going from kids not understanding your last name or mm, you know yeah. why you're so dark or stuff like that so I, n- you know? I never got like the dark stuff. I got like, I think they tried to bully me first day. Oh, I wasn't true. rocking like this dude. It's like ski boat me. Uh. <laughs> I, I t- you know, Mike Clement from Woodmore. Oh, oh we went yeah, to school. yeah, we went to this. That oh, was the dude trying to ski really? with you. Yeah, you I slapped again? that nigga, bro. <laughs> I smacked him right back. He was like, "Oh, that's E. Oh, hi." Right. So I was like, "Okay, I'm just not sweet." <laughs> when you guys first came, where did you go? Well, I didn't go to that school immediately. I went to another school before I came oh, to that school. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we, I came, nah, I went to Woodmore. I, we lived in Bowie. Oh, Bowie, Maryland, okay. yeah. Bowie, Maryland. And I lived in uh, Gaithersburg Dang. for a little bit. Where yeah. did you go? Uh, I think it was called Resnick mm-hmm. elementary, right. elementary School. Yeah, that's where I went. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mine was a little more down. chill because, you know, white kids, they don't – um. <laughs> they don't pick on Africans like as much as black, black kids. kids. Yeah, yeah. So I, it was oh, a little bit more crazy. chill. That's real. Yeah. That's real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah they black they kids, they kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <it's laughs> but white kids be like, oh, that's 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 that's, so that's cool. ethnic, you know? Right. Yeah. 
Oh, he exotic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Becky trying to take you home. He's culture. <laughs> right. He is culture. Because they, they also probably travel a mm-hmm. lot more. You so, know. so going through your culture at all, or your transition, excuse me, did you guys like ever experience being ashamed of your culture when you guys were being picked on or bullied or try to you because I, I notice a lot of children who come over a transition or have an accent know a different language yeah. they try to switch it up yeah. i have a lot of friends who speak different languages but they promise like they wanted to get rid of it because they didn't like the fact that friends come over their houses they yeah. don't understand what's going on and stuff like that did you ever experience that so very early on i don't want to say like I was ashamed of it because I don't think I was. I just feel like I just honestly just wish people would just say my last name right. That was the only thing I was, I was like, man, my last name is not even that hard to say. Like, why people? And I remember I had this teacher. He would mess it up on purpose all the time. Oh, so he would have got Yeah, like, up. no, but I'm trying like, he would add like seven extra letters. I'm like, dude, my last name is five letters. Like, it's not that long. <laughs> How do you so, say your last name? Owusu. That's not hard. No, let me tell you what he used to say. He used to be like, Jesse Owusu. Hold on. That's my phone, guys. Time's up. (laughs) He would be like, Jesse Owushala. What? So I'd be like, I'd be like, yo, like, and then everybody started laughing. So I'm like, damn, I wish my last name was easier to say. But as far as like culture, I used to like, you know, tell my language to my friends. And it was never really like, ashamed of being African for me, you know. That's dope. That's yeah. good. Yeah, it's, I think it was, it was the same for me, but I, I just didn't want my parents to, like, come to school oh, for yeah. me if I got in that's, trouble. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that, that was, like, the <laughs> ultimate fear, like, because then I used to be, like, bad in, in like, uh, in sixth grade. I came in fifth grade, and I used to be bad in, like, sixth grade. Trying to do the same stuff you were doing in Nigeria, that's the problem, huh? You know what? <laughs> no, that's real. That's the problem. That's so real. He was trying to do the same thing. Like, a lot of people were like, oh, you're trying to fit in. And I was just like, I just want to play. Like, I, just wanna, like, I was just a playful kid. This nigga has spent his whole soccer. life playing games. Okay? <laughs> he is still playing games. I just want to play. <laughs> Dang. That's crazy. That is crazy. What do you feel that your parent, because you're both artists. Yeah. You both do music, hip hop, a little hip hop, a little singing, a little rapping, a little Afro beat in there. But I notice that a lot of African parents want their kids to be engineers, doctors, mm-hmm. lawyers. Definitely like, a doctor you, first. Yeah. You yeah. you you need to do something with your life. But then they found out that y'all were gonna do nothing with your life <laughs> and be <laughs> artists. Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> so what, exactly what it is. how was how was that? What what did you what was your coming out story? And what was, <laughs> what, what, and what was their dream for you in the beginning? Like what was their what was their dream or their aspirations for you before? So with my parents, it was um it was like because my brother, he was studying to be a pharmacist, my older brother. So I was kind of like always look up to my older brother so i was like you know i'm gonna do that too but i had no business trying to do that because i wasn't like a school kid really so i was like all right i'm gonna do that so boom i'm doing that and i just i'm not really like taking school series i'm not really going to classes like that so boom it's not working then i got hip to rapping when i was like in freshman year of college so boom i'm rapping and my mom i played to my mom she's like oh this is cool but you still like <laughs> you know but then i kept not like basically the pharmacy thing wasn't gonna work for me so i was like yeah. boom all right i'm not like my rap career is not going nowhere right now so i'm like oh right, you know what mom she's like why don't you try to be a nurse i'm like i try so i really put one big effort into trying and um i tried so hard and i was smart too like i used to get like i was smart people used to try you're to not, off you're my not test. smart anymore oh what I'm what smart. what happened where nah, did the nah, smartness nah, nah, nah. go <laughs> But like I'm talking about even school smart, yeah. Oh, yeah. and then um, I think God literally tried to tell me, yeah, no, it would be a waste for you to to be a nurse because yeah. that's not what I made you for. So it was to the point where mm. I had did all my work and I was getting A's on all my tests. Boom, in this one class, and I needed this class to go into the program. So boom, um, the teacher just literally literally gave me the wrong grade not off some like oh i think i deserve like i calculated it and then she was like um 
I try to call her after the semester's over. She's like screening my calls, like ducking my emails. I'm like, you, you literally gave me the wrong grade. So I'm like, God, is this you trying to tell me that no matter what I do, like I'm not gonna be able to be successful at mm. this? So that was the moment where I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I think I'm just gonna drop out of school and just do music because that's the only thing I know how to do. And I'm, mind you, I'm not lit in music right now, but I just know inside of me it gotta be that. Yeah. So then she's like, Nah, nah, nah you crazy, woo woo. But I'm just like, I'm checking out of school. So, <laughs> like, I'm you know, going. How oh, go did ahead. She say it? Uh, we got into a big argument. But, like, I'm not like me. And I love you, mom and dad. But I'm not, like, afraid, <laughs> like, of that. I just be like, because I was also like, hey, if y'all say, if we don't come to an agreement, I'll just move out the house. So I was just like, whatever. You can't say nothing then. That's you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I just make it easy for y'all. So they was like, okay, look just just finish this joint like just get some kind of english joint or something <laughs> so i was like all right, all right i'll do that because i probably had like maybe a year and a half left so boom then I, i'm doing that and then they know i do music is that when you went from eastern shore to Bowie State? nah i was already at Bowie State at that time so boom i'm at Bowie. then i'm like yo i started doing my thing i'm not taking school seriously though boom i'm doing my thing music then i started coming up then my mom's like oh, okay you doing your thing all right but yeah. just finish <laughs> and then i started selling shirts so then i started really making some money she's like oh okay but still finished <laughs> and then um i got my first music check for like a thousand dollars then she's like what <laughs> so boom then it's like okay oh he making money yeah <laughs> it's like i respect it but still finished finish. right. and then <laughs> Then at that point, I'm so focused on music, I'm not even going to class. Like, yeah, I'm literally dang. probably going to fail all my classes. But I told my teachers, I'm like, yo, like, I'm getting calls from this label. Woo, woo, please, like, I, let me graduate this semester because I'm not coming back if y'all don't yeah. pass me. And then my teachers are all just like, all right, man, we're going to make sure you graduate. And oh, they literally nice. just gave me grades I didn't have. <laughs> that right, that communication And that's why HBCUs be lit, because it's like, they care about you more. Yeah. They realize it's not like a big school where they I don't care about dream. you, you know what I'm saying? They, they really they for believe us, in me. And you also, for us, by <laughs> boo -boo. Boo -boo. <laughs> But, oh, but you, uh, I, I think also because you tried. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, 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 you knew it, mm -hmm. you knew what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, you used to be smart, like you said. <laughs> so, but but you you actually put in the effort, and then you were you had enough courage to go to them and say like, look, and this and them. communicate with them. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. Like I'm about to blow up. Yeah. You know, I'll come back and see you. Give you a T-shirt. You know, <laughs> and they all passed you. They gave you that good grade. Yes, see, I don't have a, a great story like that about like, you know, what I'm doing with my life. But the communication with teachers is. A1. For sure. Because I promise you, I wouldn't have been out of college if it wasn't for my communication. For communication. Yeah, mm -hmm. like calling your teachers, hey, I'm going to be late. Just save my seat. Warm it for me. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> now, Manny, I know your story may be a little bit different. I know your dad's an artist, right? Yeah. Oh, so really? your dad's an artist, you know, pretty big deal in Nigeria. Um, but what was your, what were, you know, what was your parents' reaction to you also wanting to follow in those footsteps? I think I think my dad's dream was to take over his band. Mm. For you to take over his band? Yeah. Mm. So at like the first day, the first weekend we moved into the States, he had a show and he, he uh, asked one of his band guys to give me a mic and I legit started like singing back up at like nine years old. So like he was grooming me, taking me to all the shows, like getting me hip to like the money, like we'll go to the bank together. Like I think damn, my dad really taught me like entrepreneurship early, but I wasn't I didn't really care. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to play soccer. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, like but I wanted to play soccer. I knew I could do music. Like my goal was to first play soccer and then when I turned like maybe 35 I would start making songs because at 35 your body is getting old you can't really yeah. run around with these kids so um excuse you <laughs> <laughs> oh <She's> right old. <laughs> <laughs> um damn we getting old but um <laughs> no she's a very young lady yeah yes thank but um <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> 
But um, my parents definitely wanted wanted me to finish school though. Mm-hmm. But my, yeah, it was so there was this guy in my church, and um, um, this is like 2014 when I first came to house and stuff. No, 2013, or oh, whatever. Um, so this guy was like was preaching, and then we just I just liked his word and all that stuff. He was a random guy from like Cali, came through, and then I was like, yo, like. I keep hearing these voices like just go just go no oh he was like i was hearing the voices saying go and he was like yo like i feel like god is telling me to tell you that you should just go just go like whatever is number one in your mind just do it that's crazy yeah but i was like oh my god this is like some spiritual because i had like a bunch of those type of like encounters where i felt like god was directly talking to me and then um i told my mom and i was like look Tolu, my younger sister is about to is about to be in school. She's about to be done with high school. You can't you can barely pay for my stuff. Like, I have to leave. Hmm. On top of that, I kinda have God stamped to leave. So she was just like, dang, okay. And then I told my dad, I said, Look, I, I might go back later. Um but that was pretty much it and they kind of they pretty much supported me like i think my parents are my biggest supporters like they asked me about music all the time like oh, that's good. a week ago my mom was like you have to blow up this year like i've never heard it i've never heard the word blow <laughs> from my mom i didn't even know i look back like what like she said oh nah this year you gotta blow up like i'm giving you some money like she's mom, about to give been me yeah BET, huh? <laughs> <laughs> i don't know she, she said i'm about to give you some money like we're gonna Whatever I got, just figure it out. Da, 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 da. So yeah. like, they're they're mass supportive. That's good. Yeah. That's real good. That's real good. So that's a, that's, a de- that's and I low key think these are easier stories because some people get it bad. Like kids look at me like I'm a god. Yeah. Like, you left school. I'm like, yeah. I mean, it was kind of easy. My parents. I know way too many low key people who dropped out. Supported me. African kids who dropped out. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Damn. Question though for you, Manny. When did, it was like. When you sung back up for your father, was that when you found out you can sing? Like, how old were you when you realized you could actually sing? When I was five. Um, no, probably earlier. We always used to do, like, uh, like school concerts, and my sister and I will always be at the forefront, leading choreography, mm. leading rap songs, I remember y'all did a, a talent show in high school. Oh yeah, me, that. yeah, yeah. Who yeah. has that recording? I could sure I can show like you. It's on YouTube. It's on. It's probably on Facebook. Oh, uh, sure. I'm. I'm gonna find it. I'll send it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's bad. It was no, bad. I don't think what it was bad. Doing? I think they. I you think I killed it. I think I was bad. Mm. <laughs> 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 I mean, but like. I'm I'm saying that's, that's what he think. I think it was good. Oh. Yeah. So like I, f- I think I found out when I was young, and then I auditioned for like the choir, and I was singing my dad's songs literally at the choir audition in Nigeria, and they're like, "Yo, like amazing, da 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 da," and yeah. So music has legit always been in me. Yeah. Yeah. Did I know? Did you ever struggle with your sound as far as singing? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I really didn't want to sing. Like I tried to do everything, but even in my dad's band. Your voice is the bomb. That thank you. So crazy. Yeah, but <laughs> I was like, yo, I don't sound like these kids. I think that was the only time I, I struggled with like being African, because mm. I would probably have an American accent. But then when I sung, bro, you, you yeah. knew this nigga yeah. was. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, nah, I'm not even gonna sing. So I would legit, even before I got comfortable with singing with my dad, I wanted to just. Play percussion. There's a video on YouTube where I was legit playing the cowbell. I'm not, I'm not singing, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm play the cowbell, and he's like, "All right, shoot, have this six month whatever by yourself." But when you turn, when I turned like 13, I think it was over. Like I legit sang at every show, back up every show. I remember when on. you first came to house for artist grant. This nigga wanted to rap on every song. I was like, yo, Manny, even, you're, even Manny, you're not that, that good of a rapper. Okay, <laughs> like, I'm going to just need you to sing. Okay, that is your yo, leg. That's like, even, he just, yeah. all he wanted to do was rap. Rap, Because I was rap, listening to rap. so much hip-hop, and I felt like a lot of rappers sucked. <laughs> and that was my biggest thing. Like, these niggas couldn't rap. 
But now I don't even care. If if the song's good, it's a good song. If I rap or sing, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the music, Dang, that's so true. <laughs> yeah, yo, every song I was just he I rapping first, again. The funny thing is, it's always artists like they will do both, so they feel like, oh, I gotta do the other genre. When everybody's like, no, we want you to do yeah. the other yeah. genre. Right, yeah, right. right. So. <clears throat> People say that you mumble rap. Okay, yeah. <laughs> He's like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They do say that. Explain what that is. Explain what mumble rap is and what is your style. I, I've heard light and colorful. I mm-hmm. listen to mm-hmm. a lot of it. Mm-hmm. You know, the way you dress. Mm-hmm. You know, the mm-hmm. all that stuff matches mm-hmm. the music. Mm-hmm. How do you describe your music? Style. So, I don't describe my music as mumble rap. Because I feel like when people are talking about mumble rap, they they talking about like like dumb music, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or like music yeah. that talks about drugs and it's not very serious or thought out. And mm. I think with me, it was more so I was at a phase where, okay, I'm getting more comfortable with being myself in music. So I was like, you know what? What if I just like, because sometimes I'll be making voice memos and then sometimes I just da 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 some in the voice memo and I won't say a word. And I'd be like, I could put a word right here, but it sounds cool if I just leave it. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I'm not gonna be afraid to just say it like that. Yeah. So I started doing it and then it just, people it became liked a thing, it. Yo. Yeah, it became a thing. I'm like, you know, I'm cool with it. So that's what happened. That's how that came out of me. So I guess I would describe my music as just authentically me. I love it. Yeah. But you know what's crazy? Like, a lot of people don't know this nigga could really rap. Like, oh, yeah. Like, I'm not even sucking him because, like, he's he's my boy. But, like, my friends that make music that rap can rap. Mm-hmm. Like, Jesse could rap. Or Foggy. Because I, yeah. I started. He was a rap. He was rapping. No, <laughs> listen. Because, you know, this funny thing is the first song I ever made in, like, 2012. Uh-huh. 2012, yeah. I was mumbling. And then my friends was like, yo, you can't do that. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> like, you can't. And I was like, you know what? I probably can't because this is my first song. Yeah. I don't know nothing. So I put all that stuff away. And I was like, let me just be a serious rapper. So all them times, like, I'm just like, okay, serious, serious, serious. So I'm working on that. Yeah. And then She's around that time, I was like, bruh. Yeah, bruh. Yeah. Where you said you, you listen to a lot of people in Texas. Oh, for sure. So you were like, yo, I'm I'm a rapper. Yeah, like rap, yeah. rapidly rap, rap, rap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. And then you got away from the people who were telling you that well, you couldn't, couldn't do, do the mumble exactly. rap. And as soon as you got away from them, then you were like, damn, I can do whatever the I, can do I whatever. want. Nobody like, can tell I, me like you, you came into your own mm-hmm. once you got away from the people who were telling you that you can't. And 100%. then that's when you literally just started blowing up. Because, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like because I I haven't heard anything of yours that sounds like African music. Yes. Do you have anything like that? Um or do you feel the need to make it? Have you ever felt pressured to make it because you are an African artist? Because of people or because you're African, yeah. Expectations. So I feel like people have never really expected me to do that because I don't feel like people think of me as like an African you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they they think of me like, oh, he's like Americanized, like he's one of them. But um, <laughs> there was a point actually, my dad was pressing me like, yo, you need to do some African songs. Like so, I was like, yeah, dang, so was dad's, yeah. You know, so I'm like, all right, I respect him. Like I'm gonna just try. So I was trying, but I was like, yo, that's not me. Like yeah. it didn't feel. And right. I like it. I like it. I listen to Afrobeats all the time, but it's just, it just wasn't me. So Wait, I what they really say? Oh, you queen now? <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you say it? <laughs> oh, you American now? That's what they all do me, but it's cool. I'm, I, I'm just, I have two cultures. I have so many cultures actually in me, and that's what makes me me. Like, if you take away anything, then I wouldn't be me. Right. Like, yeah. I can get into that eventually. Yeah, you know. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. My time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You what ever felt you, pressured? Man? Not pressured. I just, I just get a. I don't care what people say when it comes to music, really. It's, uh, but I get a lot of, oh, you should make a song like Wizkid, and I'm like, I'm definitely not gonna do that. Mm-hmm. But I will, I will say that my sound now, 
I think the the older I get, the more Afro influence I I become. But it's definitely not any of the Wizkids and the Davidos and stuff like that. But Press how do you yeah. say his name? Is it Davido? Is it Davido? What Everybody is changes it? it? It's a, like that nigga's name is David. David. <laughs> so, <laughs> You are from Atlanta, Georgia, yeah. okay? Atlanta, so it's, it's the, the, the Nigerians say Davido. Yeah. And then when you want to talk to the Americans, you'd be like, oh, Davido. True. Davido. Yeah. That's exactly what it sounds like. Too. That's, like, that's well, what when, it like when I'm talking, like the other day we had an argument about just different artists. Ah, Davido is the one. Uh, Davido is Davido. <laughs> but then when I'm around Americans, I just be like, oh, Davido. You heard of Davido? I don't know why I even do that. That's whack. So they just, can understand. They probably don't have to be, huh? Who? True. Right, right. Because that gets irritating having to repeat yourself yeah. four or five times. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like so the the African sound, the African culture, is becoming a really big thing now? Yeah. Right. Do you feel as far as music goes, you guys being artists, do you feel like Americans are benefiting off of the Afro sound? For example, Drake, or yes. Or Janet Jackson, oh, you know she she she, 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 ain't, she ain't benefit. <laughs> <laughs> she, she tried it. She yeah, tried right. it. I, I can't. She, I'm not. <laughs> she she. Uh, I think it was her last song she put out. She had it was an Afro beat. She had uh, uh, a Latino rapper mm-hmm. in it. Well, that was a it, it was not even not even just saying the music, Sierra, the culture in the general. Because I can think about Beyonce going on YouTube, finding those three African boys who were dancing. Oh, I need to find them and put them. The girl <laughs> who runs the world video, you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Like the culture in general. Yeah. Do you think so? Do you think, think they're taking advantage of it, benefiting what is off it of it? Appro- appropriation. 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 Oh, they appropriate. <laughs> they appropriate. Honestly, nah, bro, I don't it's even. A safe, it's a safe space. This is a safe, safe space. space. Don't be space. afraid of the Americans. The internet ain't never a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> no. But to be honest, I don't. I don't care if they. I'm with you though. Because like, we could all be like, "Oh, they're stealing," but there's there's slightly shining light on the sound or like. Even though it's like it's not like the exact sound that we create. The only thing I hate is when a song is freaking. Um, it's clearly not Afro beats. It's like dance hall, dance hall. And like Tory call- Lanez, what he does yeah, all the time. That's not mm. Afro beats. Yeah. That's just dance hall. That's the only thing I hate. And and I think they think they're benefiting from. I just told yeah. you this the other day. I saw it on Instagram. This girl. It was a. Uh, the Vito song. She, oh, this is my favorite reggae song ever. I'm like, huh, bro. I, <laughs> like I she went said to that, like, park. This is my favorite reggae song right I now. I went I'm to like, park, oh, bitch, no. and the DJ was like, "Shout out to all my in- West Indians," and he plays the Vito. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, it's that's, like, uh, right. I said no. <laughs> you gotta get up, and he's on the radio. Yes, I think that's what, what the, will blow me more than anything. Bruh, that's like, what blew. You don't even know. Yeah, like, you don't shout even out to know. my West Indians and Islanders, the Vito. <laughs> if I tell you, say I, love you. That's I couldn't right. even enjoy yeah. the song because yeah. I was yeah. in my yeah. yeah. like that's, halfway that's, through. That's the only yeah, thing I can say that blows me. Like I wanted to tweet him, but like I was just like, bro. Let me educate you just a little. Hey, bit. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, or, man. He, he go got up, it. Go up to him after. I got a single say, coming hey, out. I, I want that joint on the radio. Never mind. We're not gonna tweet you. We're not gonna tweet you. All right. Last question we have. Okay. For both of you. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Two more. Two more. One. Do you have an American dream? Uh, I definitely wouldn't say I have an American dream, but I guess if you say an American dream is like, you know, to have a nice house, nice car, with the a, fence, you know, dogs, you know, I I, de- I definitely <laughs> want to have that, but I feel like everybody want to have that though. I, I would say my dream is just to do what. God called me to do and uh you know provide for my family and that's about it really do you feel like you can do that anywhere oh yeah for sure Mm -hmm. Manny yeah I just can't leave so (laughs) (laughs) I gotta do it here (laughs) I have no choice I I just gotta do it in America but I know that if I go to Nigeria today I would be like 
yeah, I would be some. I would be bigger. So would you move back home? Probably not till I'm older. Mm. Yeah, I'd I probably would. just travel, go you back would, a lot. You would move back to Accra. I would. I would. Have you Ga- been Ga- back since? Yeah, I've been back. Mm-hmm. Ghana is kind of better than Nigeria, though. Is it? I, that's what I keep hearing. As far as, far as, as like, far as, yeah, like con- politically and stuff. Put it, like yeah, yeah, they're just yeah. a lot. The more a bit more civilized niggas and Ghana, in Ghanaians are just nicer. Yeah, facts. Nigeria. Like Ghanaians are nice that's people. True. My grandma. Yeah. Nigerians are just <laughs> mean. Just, just mean yeah. people. No, we got it. We got it on the hospitality, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Man, no, just I'm just kidding. Just I'm just kidding. Wait, I'm just so, kidding. can I ask you a question? Absolutely. All right. So, like, what do you see as far as like? Because you know how growing up, we all dealt with all the African booty scratches, mm-hmm. all that stuff. And what do you see? Because I feel like now, somebody had this tweet the other day. It was like, bro, back then it was, oh, you black is a da 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 da. Now it's, oh, you so chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, what do you see as far as like from a black perspective, like how black people are? how they feel about Africans now more so than how they used to. Mm. Like, do you see the change? You see a change? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, having the first orange president has definitely <laughs> yeah. has definitely forced us to appreciate our blackness. <laughs> okay. You know, that's okay. first of all. Orange. I think as far as my generation goes, I think we've probably always been curious about where our parents came from, our mm-hmm. grandparents. I can speak for myself. Mm-hmm. So I've always wondered, you know, mm-hmm. and they, they you are African American. I don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not so a thing. what is I'm just black. That's a that's a conversation for another day. Yeah, for another th- yeah, yeah. But um I do see a change. I do see a switch. I think it has a lot to do with Obviously, Wakanda forever. Oh, that did, yeah. You know, every it gave yeah. everybody, you know, African pride, not yeah. just black pride. Yeah. Everybody, oh yeah, we got to go back. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then the celebrities doing their thing, with going back to Ghana. Mm-hmm. You know, going back to Nigeria, trying to figure out. Sabra, was it just me or did everybody go to Ghana last year? Oh, yeah. Everybody, 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 everybody was in, everybody everybody was in Nigeria and Ghana, yeah. Yeah. traveling like, back and forth, yeah. crazy. Yeah. And then I think also the politicians Mm -hmm. in Africa are more welcoming now. They want them to come in. They're calling them to come in. It's Mm -hmm. like, yo, come back, come see. So all of that spreads. But yes, there is definitely a big difference. I think the the Hollywood Mm -hmm. is making that difference. And I think the music industry is making that difference. And for us now it's cool to be African or of African descent. Because when I was coming up, it was cool to be mixed. Okay. Like it's still skin. cool to be mixed. To uh, be maybe. Let me say this. Maybe. I think that personally, I think we still have a long way to go. Oh, mm-hmm. hell yeah. Because with the acceptance still comes the ignorance. Like mm-hmm. even for me, like I have people tell me, you're the prettiest African I've seen and stuff, you know, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I'm like, wait, you ain't seen shit. Like, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like right. we still have so long to go. Like it's accepted to have people around you from different cultures. Yeah, yeah. But I don't necessarily think it's still the cool thing to be African. Like when I say in Atlanta, I don't know if this is here, but like the experience of like my friends wanting to date an African man now has yeah. gone like you bitches are crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, like it's chill. <laughs> like, but the thing about <laughs> like all of my everybody wants some type of foreigner, some yeah. type of I think it's accepted, but it's not it's it's cool to have it around but i don't think the culture is exactly accepted the way it should be okay. because everybody wants to take something from it and make it into what they uh, want to make it into they, they but i think take. they want to take yeah. what they can so it's like oh the nigerian man because he has money and mm-hmm. he treats me like this but they cheat they do this they gonna have you living you know any yeah. any other like you know just anything like I I think we still have a long way to go, but it is yeah, it is anything. it's cool. It's fun dancing that's to cool. the music, you know. It's fun dancing to the music. They play it on the radio now. Yeah, but I I still feel like I'm. It don't. I wouldn't say it offends me, but it's like y'all are fraudulent as hell. But yo, they play that uh, Joanna. Bro, <laughs> yeah. uh, that and they, Devito is so. I'm talking. Yeah. I knew it was in a different world when I Joanna. went to this little basketball game. 
like for the kids and stuff like that. And then um, they put on Joanna. I'm talking about all the kids knew that more than any other song they played. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, okay, we moving on up. It's getting, <laughs> better. It's getting better. Any more questions? Uh, anything y'all want to say? Plug y'all stuff too, so people can make yeah, sure they. <laughs> yeah. Follow me at Manny Wells. <laughs> Second, uh, M A N N Y W E L L Z. That's everything. Click on the link. Oh, you gonna, it's going to be a link? No. Okay. <laughs> we're, just, we're just like saying it. Uh, <laughs> subscribe to our channel. We ain't got no channels. Uh, yeah, my name is Foggy Raw. So F-O-G-G-I-E-R-A-W everywhere. So, yeah. A really dope artist. Please, please check him out. Please, please, please check him out. Oh, this is good. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Us, yeah. yeah. This was dope. Mm-hmm. We're like all this. African. Even For Becky sure. with the good hair. Sure. Yeah. Cause then she might have a kitchen. Becky it might get nappy hair. back there. Sad. That's that African in you. All right. <laughs> thanks guys. Love y'all. Bye. Right. Bye. Deuces. <laughs>